Does it taste like beef? <laughs> the texture, the, the, the mouth feel has a, a, a feel like meat. The, mm -hmm. you know, what Hani was just saying, the absence is, I, I feel like the fat. Can science solve the world's growing demand for meat? Maybe so. Welcome to Lunch Break. I'm Simon Constable in for Wendy. A Dutch researcher has unveiled the world's first test tube burger today in London. And here to explain is Ken Cook, co-founder and president of the Environmental Working Group, a public health advocacy organization. Thank you for, for being there, sir. Um, test tube burger, please explain. We're, we're, we're a bit befuddled here. <laughs> Well, Simon, I think uh, it's brand new, so a lot of people are befuddled. The basic idea is to take uh, beef cells from a cow and clone them. Uh, they take muscle cells, uh, stem cells that can only grow muscle, and uh, they put them through the same kind of process that they use to grow tissue for medical purposes. In fact, the researcher, his uh, research interest initially has been, for most of his career, uh, the development of tissue for for medical purposes and surgery. Uh, so it, what, what it offers is the possibility of producing the exact same kind of meat you would have in a cow except outside the cow. Now this first burger was, was five, five ounces and it cost a total of $331,000 and, and a, a little bit more. But, but it's a lot of money for, for a burger. You were at the taste testing today in, in London. You didn't taste it, but what was the reaction of the people who did taste it? You know, I would, I would characterize their reaction as they were, I think, basically pleasantly surprised. It, it felt like meat as they were chewing it. Uh, the taste was pretty mild. Uh, there was no seasoning of any kind uh, except uh, some of the oil and the butter that was used to fry it up in the pan on the stage. So it's not the way most of us would ever think of consuming a, a hamburger. But uh, generally speaking, I think they, they felt like it was a very good start. Uh, we're looking at a process that's going to take 10 to 20 years before anything comes to the marketplace. Mm -hmm. And during that time, they're going to have to be doing a lot more work to figure out things like how to put fat into this burger. There's no fat whatsoever. It's all muscle meat. And uh, that's, of course, part of the texture and taste experience with a, a conventional hamburger. So they've got a ways to go on taste, a ways to go in scaling it up, making sure, of course, it meets all health and safety standards, mm -hmm. making sure the consumer's accept it. So. Now, now, I understand that the way we farm beef uh, at the moment here in the U.S., it, it, it's very factory intensive and that has certain environmental problems, doesn't it? Yes, the vast majority of beef that's produced is not uh, produced in sort of a bucolic way with the cattle frolicking in the, in the pasture and then having one bad day. Uh, it turns out that beef production is pretty intensive at the, at the latter stages of each animal's life confinement feeding uh, operations where uh, thousands and thousands of animals usually are crowded together uh, and then the, the slaughterhouse. And as a consequence, uh, we eat a lot of beef. We have fairly cheap beef in the United States, but along with it come environmental problems, health issues. Just the other day, a, a recall of some 50,000 pounds of ground beef from a plant uh, based uh, company based in Kansas City because it was contaminated with a very virulent uh, strain of uh, E. coli bacteria that uh, can kill people. So you have lots of problems with conventional meat production and that's why I think this is a technology that down the road may be worth a look. Yeah, let's just go through some of those things. I mean, wh wh one is water. It takes a really a lot of water to produce a pound of beef. You, you have a lot of uh, um, antibiotics being injected into the cows because they tend to be raised on corn and, and not grass. You have um, greenhouse gases, flatulence, if, if, if you like. All of that could be done away with with test tube burger, right? That's correct. I mean, there will still be an environmental footprint, but it will be much smaller. I mean, we, we currently use about 70% of our arable land for the grain and the, the grasses that are used to produce beef. And so just the impact on the land alone and the other factors that you mentioned is very significant. And so going forward, we have hundreds of millions of people entering the middle class uh, every year in countries like China and India and elsewhere. Uh, we have a population growth uh, occurring on top of all of that. So the, the combination of those two means more demand for beef. And the question is, can we possibly 
continue to produce it the way we have in the past. And my sense is that uh, unless we're willing to accept the environmental damage and so forth, the cost, uh, uh, we should look for some other options. Of course, one option is to eat less meat. And I think a lot of Americans are starting to do that, but we have a ways to go. Okay, time to order the salad then, at least for uh, a few years while this gets up and running. Thank you very much, Ken Cook. We appreciate your time, sir. My pleasure, Simon.